So I, I guess I'd say for, for somebody who's brand new, they should be very active in seeking out peers who, who may have good records themselves. And so they are teachers of reputation who can come in and, and give them some advice. It's important for them to act on it as well to not just have somebody come into the classroom so that they can have that person write a letter talking about how great class was that day. It's important for, for younger faculty to go through the process of having that person look at their materials, look at their assessments, um, give them some feedback, and then document how they've responded to that. Um, as a department head, that's really valuable to me when I see faculty who do that as they're, you know, as they're looking at promotions um, you know, through the ranks, it's, it's really critical that I can see that they've established a record of, of improvement based not just on student feedback but peer. The, my strategy there is quite simple. I go to faculty members who are really good at teaching and that are knowledgeable and have a, an interest in uh, a passion for uh, pedagogy and new advances in, in those types of studies and I go right to them because Google searching and digging around you know am I hitting the right a good right. resource uh, yeah. whereas I think that information's already been vetted uh, and so I go to trusted faculty members that are just so receptive uh, in trying to give me feedback and, and help me uh, in terms of directing me, pointing me towards uh, information and, and resources that are valuable. I, I would certainly encourage them to look for opportunities to communicate their research, communicate ideas, um, either through uh, journal clubs. Those are great opportunities, right? Because you're digesting complex information and then you're presenting it to, to a group there's always faculty, right, that could use help. Um, our, we have departmental assistantships, which are a, a great um, tool for, for those that, that have those uh, aspirations to teach, to get some experience. But there really aren't enough of these teaching assistants to go around. So if you volunteer, uh, I think that's a great way to uh, engage in that pathway. I really have, I've done like a lot of uh, the trainings for City and that has actually really helped me because um, I've developed several online courses over the years and for me it's realizing that I don't, especially when I started developing my first one, that I'm not the expert in developing an online course and that's okay and uh, it's finding who that expert is and then bouncing ideas off them and trying to figure out the best way to you know teach a certain course or certain concepts in an online blended or face-to-face -face format and a lot of the courses that I teach now are more online and so City has been an excellent tool for me. In addition to like talking with other faculty that I kind of mentioned earlier I also um, like to connect with faculty who teach similar courses in other universities. And so, for example, I oftentimes connect with the faculty who taught me some of the courses that I now teach when I was an undergraduate student. And so, you know, we share assignments and we kind of talk through different things that, you know, competency-based assignments that we need to um, be providing our dietetic students. And so, using them as a, not only a resource for, hey, what ideas do you have, but also what resources do you use? And, you know, are there ways that you've done this that have been more effective for students? And so connecting with the faculty and other programs has been really beneficial. We have a kind of a work group of people that across the country that are dietetics educators. And so we have a listserv where we can constantly like send out an email saying, hey, you know, I'm needing ideas of to how to teach counseling in an online environment. Anyone have any ideas? And actually those types of listservs have been also really beneficial for me. And those are typically through my, like the organizations that I'm affiliated with. And really I've found just like faculty here at USU, faculty and other universities too, are wanting to help mentor kind of newer teachers um, as they become, you know, as they get more experience. Especially here at USU, I think we're really fortunate to have such great kind of in-house professional development. We have a lot of opportunities 
just here on campus, like easy to attend, or you can attend virtually um, opportunities for additional training and resources. But yeah, I definitely think the conferences are such a great way to just couple of days, you can attend a lot of different sessions with a lot of different people and just kind of hear not only from the presenters but also from the attendees as well. And it kind of gives you a jumping off point. We had, um, I just attended a conference recently and one of the attendees when she was talking about what she took away from it, she said, I attended this conference like three years ago and I came back with all these ideas that I wanted to work with and implement and she's like, and now I feel like, okay, now I'm back here and I filled up my shopping cart again and get to bring all this <laughs> stuff home with me. And I was like, that's a really good analogy because that's kind of how I feel generally is I come home with this whole bag full of stuff and new tips and tricks I want to try. And I really had a great experience with the, the people in the city department. I feel like they're very helpful and willing and enthusiastic to help you. So I think you could find and reach out to probably anybody and they could continue to point you in the right direction. Uh, well, where I get ideas from all everything you said, from conferences, from uh, presentations, teaching presentations, the ET uh, series here on campus, from talking to colleagues, from teaching books. I, it's a mix, right? It's not one, one thing that you're going to read that is going to change your mind as an educator. I think it's a combination of things as well as it's the same thing in science. How do you learn to be a scientist? By, you know, reading papers, talking to people, going, taking classes. So it's a combination of uh, professional development activities that you have to do to get to that point. I read my professional journals, my professional magazines um, whenever they come out. I go to attend conferences, I present at conferences, I, I talk to my colleagues, you know, half the going to a conference is not only going to the sessions, but talking to your colleagues, like saying, hey, what are you doing with this, you know, what are you doing here? And then, you know, sharing it. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's how I keep current, um, I keep involved.